Hello guys, today let's talk about PHP exceptions in Laravel. How to use them, what are the examples of how other people use that, and how to create your own exceptions with your own logic. Let's start with an example. As always, I'm a big fan of examples and problem-based learning. So imagine you have a controller, simple controller of showing user by username. You find the user and pass that to the view. And view is a simple blade based on default Laravel 8 page. You just show the name, show the email, show user created at. And in the browser, it is something like this. So user's admin is found and you show name, email and created at. Now, what happens if user is not found? For example, let's change the URL and you get the exception. Exception comes from the blade because we didn't check actually if the user is found. So this object is empty and of course there is an error in a browser. And our goal as developers is to show that error correctly in a user-friendly way. And the first thing we need to do about it is the security thing to hide that exception. In .env file here you need to set debug to false. Locally it may be true but on production server it should show 500 server error. So at least hide the actual exception. Because otherwise you will show a lot of details, sensitive details about your servers, variables and all of that. And that is a security issue. So that's step one. But in reality, this is useless. 500 server error, it doesn't say anything to our visitors, to our users. And a step in the right direction would be to show a correct error page like 404 not found instead of 500, which is meaningless. So to show proper 404, let's change that back to true for now. To show proper 404, we can use eloquent method first or fail. There is a method find or fail, and first or fail. And they both, in case of failing, they will return 404. Refresh the page and you see 404 not found. And that is better already, but still, not found what? We need to help our visitors to understand what is the error reason. So there are two ways how we can customize that 404 page. If you just want to make 404 prettier with your own custom design or with more text like that, all you need to do is to create a special page. Let's open the sidebar. Resources, views, new directory errors. And then if you create blade file with specific error code, which is for example 404 blade PHP, and for example this will be a new 404 page, save. And instead of that not found, we refresh, it will show the new page for 404 errors. Similar to 500 or any other errors, you just create a blade file with that status code, with that error code, and it will automatically show when the error with that code appears anywhere in Laravel. But what if you want to have specific error page for user not found? And this is where we get to catching the exception. Let's get back to our controller. And in here, instead of first or fail, we will do first and then add try catch block. So we are trying to get the user. If something goes wrong, we catch the exception, exception, and then do something about it. In our case, let's return another view, users not found, for example. But the main thing here is class name of that exception. What can be the exception? If you want to catch any exception, you just go like this slash exception, backslash exception. And this one is actually pretty important because there are a lot of classes with the name exception in Laravel and in PHP. So there is no guarantee you would not catch some exception from some package or something. So backslash exception is PHP exception, so the core of the core exceptions. And let's create that users not found. So users new blade file, user not found by username. And of course, we need to cause that exception to happen because this, even if it doesn't return a user, it won't cause the exception. The exception would be caused by that first or fail. So we return it back. That fail will cause the exception, which by default would be handled with 404 page. But in our case, it would be caught by this statement and will show this page. Let's refresh. And there we go, user not found by username, which means it shows our new page. 
let's get even deeper and catch the right kind of exception, the right class of exception. Because in our case, we're catching anything that goes wrong, and in any case, we're showing user not found. And it may be not the case. For example, if there is some other action in that class, for example, load some relationship projects, which doesn't exist, and that would cause totally different exception. So let's return that to first, then we load the projects, and we launch the URL with existing user. The error will be user not found by username, although the actual problem is here. If we dump, if we dump exception get message, this is actually the message that comes from the exception. The actual error is called to undefined relationship. And we need to know the right exception class. We can do that by doing get class of that exception like this. We refresh relation not found exception. So let's do that. Copy. And we need to catch that exception relation not found exception, we should return users relations or something, some view about relations. And in case of this not found, let's return that one and catch another exception. So the whole thing about exceptions is that you can catch multiple exceptions that come from different parts of your code or some package or some service class. And in case of different exceptions, you're showing different error messages, doing different actions about that. So in that case, in case of model not found, there is a specific class, which is model not found exception. And actually, we can do that same here. Use this, and then we don't need full path here. So in case of not found, we're showing users not found. And in case of relations, let's do file save as relations blade relation not found by username. We refresh the page and now relation not found. So if we are doing this, then user is not found. If we are querying the correct user and loading the relationship wrong, then another exception is caught. And this is what is done, shown the actual correct error page. A very good example of this catching different exceptions is a Stripe library, Stripe for Payment Provider. See the example of the code of doing any Stripe request. And there are multiple things that may go wrong with credit card, with parameters, with whatever. And for each of them, you have a different exception. So card exception, rate limit exception, request exception, authentication, API connection, and stuff like that. And the main fallback, if there is no exception to be found, catch global exception. So we now know how to catch the exceptions. Now let's learn how to throw the exceptions. Imagine you have some kind of separate class which does all the logic for you. And this is a really simple example, simplified, maybe too much, but still. You have some kind of service which does finding by username. It may be a repository class, it may be service class. I have a separate video actually about how to use the services and I will link that in the description of this video. But anyway, you have a service which does find by username, which returns the user. So it's the same logic, we just moved it to some separate class. And imagine if some exception happens here, how do we catch that in the controller? Or better question is how do we pass that to controller? And this is exactly what throw is about. So we're doing user first, and then if there's no user like this, we do throw new, whatever exception we want. Let's try first model not found exception, but not just model not found, we can pass a message. So user is not found. It's not just model, it's a user model. Or not even that, by username, username, like this. And then we're doing the catch and we may pass a message. Error, for example, exception get message. And then inside of that not found, we can do just that, error. That's it. Of course, in reality, it would be a pretty design with header and footer and all of that. But to simplify, I will stick to this example. And now if we launch that, user admin is OK. User admin whatever is exactly the error we've been looking for. And it's exactly the error that we passed from our service. So we threw the new exception with our message. 
And a step further to that is to create your own exception with your own logic. So let's create our own exception class. PHP artisan make exception user not found exception. Created successfully. It is created in app exceptions user not found exception. It's empty by default and it extends the default core exception class. And then if we look into Laravel documentation, official documentation, there are a few ways how to handle the exception and it actually changed in Laravel 8 a bit, but I will show you the old logic which still works in Laravel 8 with two methods. So you have two methods, report and render. So report and render, for report you can log something to somewhere, so write something to log file, and in render you can return the view, whatever you want. So user not found, and now if we copy that user not found exception into our service, instead of default model not found exception, we are throwing this, actually, like this, remove that line, close the sidebar, and we are throwing that user not found, and then we need to catch the same exception in the controller, not model not found, user not found exception, like this. And if we refresh the page, the result is the same, but the benefit of your own exception is more readability. So what actually happened? Of course, it's a very simplified example with just a few lines of code, but if you have like 50 lines of code and a few services and a lot of things going on, the actual exception class with user not found will tell you exactly what happened. Not just model not found, not any HTTP exception or general exception, it's user not found exception. So your own custom exceptions make the code more readable for other developers and yourself in the future. So that's all I wanted to tell you about exceptions in Laravel and in PHP. For more information, you can read official Laravel documentation, quite a big page about error handling. And if you want to support my channel, subscribe to the channel and tell your friends to subscribe because I'm shooting videos almost daily now. And also you can support this channel by doing one of two things, using our Laravel admin panel generator at quickadminpanel.com or enroll in one of my online courses at laraveldaily.teachable.com. See you guys in other videos.